and stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight. For the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming. And the rockets raced with the bombs bursting in air, gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, who saved us that star-spangled Retire the colors. I'd like to ask you to remain standing for this morning's uh, invocation led by Rabbi Craig Myers of Temple Beth Shalom. morning. As we prepare to enter into prayer, if it is your tradition and custom to bow your head or remove a head covering, please do so at this time. O oh God, whom we know by many names, we ask your blessing upon this convocation today as we gather to remember our fallen heroes. We know that exploring the amazing and wondrous universe you have created carries risks and we ask your protection for those who continue in this noble endeavor, seeking knowledge and betterment of mankind, benefiting all of your creations. Help us make the memories of those who lost their lives in the pursuit of the exploration and understanding of the cosmos a blessing to all of us who remain. May the knowledge gained and the lessons learned from their experiences help keep future explorers safe and further our quest to understand your universe. Be with the families and friends of the heroes we have lost through the years. You who are the source of all comfort and peace, bring that peace and comfort to your children who mourn. May you help us to be inspired to live lives worthy of their memories, lives that incorporate their ideals and their thirst for knowledge, lives that are filled with good deeds performed in their name and honor lives of charity and care for our fellow human beings, and lives committed to continuing the work they started. Praised are you, O God, sovereign of time and space, who gave us life, sustained us, and brought us to this special commemoration together. And we say, Amen. Thank you, Rabbi. You may be seated. Again, thank you for being here for this special day as we honor our falling astronauts. Uh, I'd like to uh, recognize and introduce Kelvin Manning, the Deputy Director of NASA Kennedy Space Center, who will say a few words to us. Thanks, Matt. And good morning. Thank you for joining us for our NASA Day of Remembrance. Today we gather to honor our fallen heroes and reflect on the lessons of the past. The gravity and the importance of this day and this ceremony are not lost on us. 
Each year we come together not only to remember the lives and the legacy of the men and the women who made the ultimate sacrifice to the quest to expand science for the sake of humanity, but to recommit ourselves to ensuring the safety of those who will continue to keep the dream of human spaceflight alive. These losses change us, but we do not accept such sacrifices as a natural cost of progress. Instead, we hold these memories close as a reminder of the great responsibility with which we have been entrusted. The crews of Apollo 1, Challenger, and Columbia, and all the other names on the Space Mirror Memorial gave their lives in pursuit of exploring our universe, expanding knowledge, enriching humanity, and we are humbled by their service. So as we rise to the challenges of today's new era in spaceflight and return to the moon, sending humans deeper into space than ever before, we salute the pioneers who have gone before us and we stand fully committed to the safety of those who pick up the torch and continue for the benefit of humanity. Thank you. Thank you so much, Deputy Director Manning. You know, it's been such a joy working with the leadership uh, at Kennedy Space Center. So blessed. Now, Bob Cabana, former director, is, uh, no, I think, from number three in Washington. And uh, Janet Petro, uh, who could not be here today. Uh, she's uh, attending Space Day in Tallahassee. Uh, really has been a, is a great leader. I mean, it's a wonderful op working with the Kennedy Space Center folks. So thank you for being here. We have a special guest that's going to say a few words uh, to us. You know, every, every year we honor all of our astronauts. We have 25 astronauts on, on the Space Mirror Memorial Wall that have made that ultimate sacrifice. But we do recognize specific events when certain anniversaries happen. And this, this year, today, is um, the 55th anniversary of the Apollo 1 fire accident. That crew who gave their life, we would have never made it to the moon by 69 without the lessons learned from that terrible accident. So today we have the brother of fallen astronaut Gus Grissom, Lowell Grissom, who's on the Board of Advisors and former board member at the Astronaut Memorial Foundation is here uh, to say a few words. Fifty-five years ago today, three astronauts climbed into their command module. This was going to be a, what they called a plugs-out test, which meant that they were going to run through the entire countdown sequence just like they would on launch day. It was less than a month away from launch date, and they were working past their normal quitting time. There were a lot of problems with that spacecraft. Gus was so uh, disappointed with the quality at, that at one point he hung a lemon on one of the simulators. Mom and Dad were down here two weeks before the fire, and he told them that even though it was an open-ended mission, he was certain that it would never go more than three orbits. Gus had tremendous frustra frustration with the uh, communication system, prompting him to say, how do you expect to hear me from the moon when you can't hear me from three buildings away? There was no particular concern for the safety of the crew that day because the rockets were not filled with fuel. The spacecraft was pressurized with pure oxygen, the same system that had been used successfully in Mercury and Gemini. Inside Apollo 1, there were 30 miles of electrical wiring. 13,000 segments tied in bundles. Power for the spacecraft surged through all of those 13,000 segments, all insulated with special materials so that one could not arc to another. Yet it happened. 31 minutes, 4.7 seconds after 6 p.m., Apollo 1 Command Module 12 
on the top of Saturn Rocket 204 on Launch Pad 34 at John F. Kennedy Space Center, a spark. Less than a half a minute later, 19.5 seconds after 6.31 p.m., Apollo 1 cracked and burst from the tremendous heat and pressure. Lieutenant Commander Roger Chaffee, this was going to be his first place flight. Lieutenant Colonel Edward White, the first American to walk in space. And Lieutenant Colonel Virgil I. Gus Grissom, the veteran of Mercury and Gemini all perished in an instant. Gus had always said that there was always a possibility that you could have a catastrophic failure, so you just plan the best you can for all the eventualities, you get a well-trained crew, and you go fly. There's no doubt that Gus, Ed, and Roger would have stepped on the moon had they lived. Some even think that possibly Gus would have been the first to step on the moon. Our future work in space is bound to include some failures, yet Apollo 1 has taught us that we can never really fail as long as we persist in our efforts. The greatest lesson that we can learn from Grissom, White, and Chaffee is that failure is impossible for those who refuse to abandon their goals. Ultimately, the most fitting tribute to the crew of Apollo 1 is for us to continue doing that for which they gave their lives and to renew our dedication to their quest. I think Gus, Ed, and Roger would be pleased to know that uh, the exploration of space is continuing and that the lessons learned from the fire made it possible for America to uh, get a man on the moon in the decade of the 60s. I think they would also be pleased that the exploration of space is continuing and that the plans now include putting a man and a woman on the moon and also maybe even to Mars. Thank you. Thank you, Lowell, for those wonderful words. And it never ceases to amaze me. The greatest supporters of human spaceflight are those family members who've lost a loved one. They do not want to see this end. And their support has been just incredible inspiration for all of us uh, that are involved in the space industry. So thank you for taking the time to be here. We have a, a number of... Uh, dignitaries here today and family members. A lot of folks here. Um, I may miss one or two, but uh, let me know afterwards so we'll get you next time. First and foremost, and we've heard from him, is Deputy Director Kelvin Manning. And, and hold your applause because it's a long list and we'll get through it quicker. Um, we have the Kennedy Space Center Visitor Complex Chief Operating Officer, Theron Protzi. On behalf of Congressman Bill Posey's office, Patrick Gavin. Florida House District 52 office, Ashley Holton. On behalf of the Bavard County Sheriff's office, Laura Moody. On behalf of the Bavard County Tax Collector's office, Aaron Frisbee. Bavard County School Board member, Matt Susan. Satellite Beach Mayor, Steve Osmer. Satellite Beach Councilman, Dominic Montanero. Rockledge City Manager Brenda Fetro, Rockledge Deputy Mayor Frank Forrester, Rockledge Council Member Michael Cador, West Melbourne Council Member Daniel McDowell, the uh, Melbourne Council Member and Vieira High School Junior ROTC Senior Instructor, Lieutenant Colonel Tim Thomas, the Chair of the Astronaut Memorial Foundation and daughter of astronaut Roger Chaffee, Cheryl Chaffee, the Astronaut Memorial Advisor and brother of Gus Grissom, Lowell Grissom, who you heard from, the AMF, the Astronaut Memorial, or more affectionately known as the AMF Director and daughter of Space Shuttle Challenger Commander Dick Scobie, Kathy Scobie Fulgham, AMF Advisor and past AMF Chair 
and the first female to command a space shuttle flight and the only female to have done it twice and she's flown four times. She's served so incredibly distinguished in a distinguished manner as our, as our chair, Eileen, Colonel Eileen Collins. Thank you for being here, Eileen. <laughs> We're excited to have her here for the weekend here at the Kennedy Space Center. AMF Director and former Space Shuttle Launch Director, Mike Leimbach. AMF Director, Joe Mayer. AMF Director, Lieutenant Colonel Michael Olson. AMF Director, Denise Coleman. AMF Advisor and retired astronaut, Lieutenant Colonel Andrew Allen, who's still doing great work out here at, at the Space Center. AMF Advisor, Lee Solid. And John Tribe, veteran, a veteran space engineer and worker out here at the Kennedy Space Center. John Tribe actually, when Lowell mentioned the communication problems that day, uh, 55 years ago, was on console and talking with Gus and experiencing those very, very problems. He may have been the last person to talk to Gus Brissenden. John, thank you for being here. We also have AMF advisor and former space shuttle launch director, Bob Seek, along with us here today. And the, and the president and CEO of the Astronaut Scholarship Foundation, Car Caroline Schumacher, and members of her staff, they're here, and they're a great partner. We work with them on many, many occasions. Now you can applaud. Thank you all for coming here. In a time of a little challenge, we are reduced in size because of the COVID uh, protocols uh, out here at the Kennedy Space Center. And this room would be much, a big crowd, but it'd be a much bigger crowd. We also, we're gonna have the event out at the memorial, but due to the threat of inclement weather, we decided to bring it inside to be safe. So we appreciate you having here. We have now uh, an opportunity to listen to an, uh, an original song written for our fallen heroes titled Above and Beyond. It's been prepared today for today's ceremony specifically and specially. The song will be performed by its composer, John Ryan, accompanied by local artists, Bonnie Harrington, David Ewan, and Tabitha Bennett. No one's heard this song publicly before. It's a new song just recently proposed for us. We thank you so much for being here. Above and beyond. chosen few who dare to journey into space to conquer new frontiers in spite of perils that they face in quest of knowledge to advance our world for humankind they put their hearts their souls their lives upon the line and they rise above and go far beyond. The great explorer who answered the call, serving humanity for the benefit of all. And as we remember their courage and their sacrifice, we honor those who greatly dare to go. Above and beyond. Their skillful innovation. 
nation forged a lasting legacy and blazed new pathways toward our future and our destiny. Space exploration helps us understand the universe for the benefit of all who live on this good earth. And as we reflect with our deep pay tribute to the women and men who gave their all for us time and again. And as we remember their courage and their sacrifice, we honor those who bravely dare to go. Thank you so much for that wonderful composition. Now we would like to pay homage to each fallen hero by name with a bell told by Vieira High School Army Junior ROTC Cadet Major Chris Hoffman. Theodore C. Freeman. Charles A. Bassett II. Elliot M. C. Jr. Clifton C. Williams, Jr. Virgil Gus Grissom. Edward H. White, the second. Roger B. Chaffee. Michael J. Adams. Robert H. Lawrence, Jr. Francis Dick Scobie. Michael J. Smith. Judith A. Resnick. Ellison S. Onizuka. Ronald E. McNair. Gregory B. Jarvis. S. 
Krista McCullough. Manly L. Sonny Carter, Jr. Rick D. Husband. William C. McCool. Michael P. Anderson. Kapna Chwala. David M. Brown. Laurel Clark. Elon Ramon. Michael T. Osbury. And now, we will place a wreath to honor those who have sacrificed their lives in the pursuit of human space flight, followed by a moment of silence. They say those who forget the past are doomed to repeat it. And our human space flight program has been fraught with disasters, but with magnificent, incredible success. It is said that our own survival as a human species will be dependent upon our ability to go into space. We are meant to be a space-faring society. It's part of our DNA. It's a God-given drive that we have as human beings. We are so thankful for those who carry that passion and make it happen. And today is so special. We're incredibly thankful for those who have given everything and have offered such inspiration. And they're still a part of us, still with us, and a part of this great, great endeavor, human space exploration. This concludes uh, this morning's ceremony. Uh, you may pay your respects by placing your flowers in front of a replica of the Space Mirror Memorial in the hall, located to my left, to your right. But weather's looking pretty good. We are at weather permitting, and I think we're, we're okay. We would like to do a processional out to the Space Mirror Memorial. 
you can leave this this door to my left and we will have a, a another uh, wreath laying ceremony there as well and if you'd like take your flower to the memorial and insert it in the wee fencing in, in front of it again thank you so much for joining us today and remembering our fallen heroes Kimba.